Welcome. This is Dr. Morton, and uh, today I'm going to talk about Chapter 11 in Logic Design. Now, this chapter is the first in the last third of the course. So, for the for the next uh, seven chapters, uh, or actually eight chapters, this one and seven more, we're going to talk about sequential design, which uh, we normally call we also call state machines. The difference between what we've studied so far, uh, which has been the foundations for logic design in the first third, and and then combinational design in the middle third, and now logic design, uh, and, and now sequential design in the last third. The difference between combinational design and sequential design is in, in combinational design, uh, we have, let, let me bring this up here, and um, in, combination, in combinational design, we have some number of inputs, some number of outputs, and our network uh, takes the current inputs and generates the outputs without regard to anything else than the present inputs. There's obviously a small propagation delay till the network settles, and then the outputs are good. And then when we change one of the inputs, then there's another small propagation delay, and the outputs are good again. All right, the big difference between that and the sequential network is that a sequential network also has a clock. We normally represent it like this. We write CLK, and then we have it coming up here. And normally it has a little edge symbol. It might be rising or falling. <coughs> and in this case, on the rising edge right there, the, the, uh, the network will change to uh, the, its next state, which could be the same state, but usually it's a different state. And usually that state that it changes to depends on not only the current inputs, but also some history that was some history of prior input that was basically captured by the prior state. So again, big difference between sequential network and combinational network is the sequential network depends not only on the current inputs, but some amount of history of prior inputs. Could be a little bit, could be a lot. Usually, if we have lots of states, then we're remembering a fair amount of history. And if we only have a few states, then we're only remembering, remembering a little bit of history. Whereas the combinational network has no history, no memory. All it, all it depends on is its current inputs and nothing else. Okay, and it turns out that most of the really um, powerful devices are state machines that require some history of prior inputs. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. But here's the book, and let's keep it long done. So this is chapter 11, and we start with this picture, and I do want you to look at this picture, because this, this really describes what we're going to do in this, in this chapter. We're going to have uh, some number of, of uh, flip-flops, in this case three, and uh, we'll call them flip-flop A, B, and C, and we'll have a clock coming in, and then we'll have, we're going to design the network to drive the D input for the A flip-flop, another little network to, to, to drive the D input for the B flip-flop, and finally another one to drive the D input for the C flip-flop. And that will make up our state machine. Now this is an example of a machine that does not have any inputs and really doesn't have any uh, uh, outputs per se. All we have is just the current state of the flip-flops. And, and we could show these, uh, this little bar up here, you see Q from the flip-flop A comes out and shows zero, and here it comes out and shows one, and here it comes out and shows zero. Usually what we'll do is put little LEDs here, and if the LED's off, we know that flip-flop zero. If it's on, like here, we know it's a one. And then here, we the, flip, the LED would be off, and then we know that, that flip-flop C is a zero. And then you can see we have these little tags around here. Those little tags would represent, um, would represent our states. Zero, one, here this is showing two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be a sequential counter and it would go back to zero on the next clock. And so that's what we're gonna, that's, that's the first thing we're gonna look at because that's a fairly simple uh, design. All right, let's talk about the learning objectives briefly here. I want you to be able to design a three-bit or maybe even a four-bit non-sequential counter. Now this one 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and back to 0 would be sequential. But we're, we're going to do one where we're going to jump around. Maybe we'll do 3, 5, 7, 2, 0, or something like that. So, um, so that, would be, that would be out of sequence, right? Uh, instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we would, be, we would jump around. And maybe there'd be some sequences that we wouldn't include in our, in our desired count sequence. We call this a non-sequential counter. So you need to be able to design one of those with three or four bits, or for that matter, even more if you really needed to. We also want you to be able to explain the difference between a sequential design that has no inputs or outputs and one that does have some inputs, uh, one or more, and maybe one or more outputs. And finally, we want you to be able to perform a sequential design with either uh, the uh, RS, JK, T, or D flip-flops. Now, most of the time in this course, uh, we're going to just design with D flip-flops. But I want you to see the impacts of, of different flip-flops. Remember, JK really is the master flip-flop, and we make the T and the D out of a JK, typically. And an RS is kind of one that has this liability that you, you can't let both R and S inputs be one at the same time. We'll talk about a number of different other considerations, but of course, in the case of RS and JK, each flip-flop has two inputs, whereas in the T and D, each flip-flop has one input. So there's more wiring with the RS and the JK, but uh, it turns out with the JK, we typically have the simplest circuit of all. Now, what you're going to see, you're going to see that, uh, that when we do these designs, we'll have usually the least hardware, but a little more wiring with JK. Next is RS, next is D, and worst, is, worst of all is T. Now, uh, but sometimes for counters, the T is not too bad if they're if they're going to count in order, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'll do our first design with the T flip-flop just because of that reason. Okay, here's a glossary, and we'll talk about state machines. We'll talk about Mealy machines, more machines. We'll talk about flip-flop inputs, transition tables, state graph, and state tables. We'll cover all that right now. All right, so how does our design flow go? Okay, well, I'm going to switch to some slides here uh, instead, so hang on. Okay, so here's some slides, and they're just a little easier to work with. They're the same learning objectives. And then here's this same chart. Now notice here, we, we have state graphs, so we're going we're gonna to talk about a state graph first. So let's look at that. So here's a state graph of, of, of a sequential count. We, we're going we're gonna to start in state S0, where our count is 0, 0, 0. We're going to go to S1, where our count is 0, 0, 1. S2, where it's 0, 1, 0. 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and finally 1, 1, 1, and then back to S0. So we're going to start in state S0, and count all the way to state S7, eight states, and then we'll go back to S0. All right, so now what we normally do is we substitute in the flip-flop encoding for our state number. And, uh, and a lot of times, what the first thing we'll do, we'll, 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 we'll copy these states into what's called a state graph. Here's our state graph. Our present state is state S0 and our desired next state. In this case, we're going to go straight from S0 to S1, S1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, 5 to 6, 6 to 7, and 7 to 0, back to 0. All right. But when we substitute in the, uh, the flip-flop encoding, then we, we, get our, we, get the three bits, what the, we get the three bits that represent the three states of the three flip-flops A, B, C in this order. And when we, when we plug that flip-flop encoding into our state table, then we get what's called our transition table. So when we substitute in the values of the flip-flops for our state names, then we actually get our transition table. So you can still see 0, 0, 0 in this problem represents state S0. 0, 0, 1 represents S1. It represents it here and here. 0, 0, 1's there, so that's S1. Here's 0, 0, 1, that's S1. And we normally order this transition table in straight binary order. Um, so by the flip-flop encoding, which means if we do some kind of weird flip-flop encoding, then it won't line up 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It may be mixed around. It'll, it will be by binary order of our flip-flop encoding though. Okay, uh, in this case, if we're in, if our flip-flops are currently all zero, then our desired next state is for C to be one. 
And then if we have C is 1, our desired next state is for B to be 1, but C to go to 0. Now, uh, when we, when we, so if we go back to our little graph here, we, we have our state graph, our chart, our table, I should say. We have our state graph. We can turn that into our state table. We can substitute in our flip-flop state assignment, and that gives us our transition table. Now, from our transition table, it, we can do K maps directly if we're doing D flip flops, but if we're using um, if we're if we're using uh, T flip flops, we're going to have to do uh, things a little differently. So let's look at that. So we'll go back here. So now we can't really we could use these columns right here if we're doing a D flip flop, but uh, if we're using D's for our design. But if we're using T's, then we have to remember how a T works, and the T works like this. Uh, if we're if we if our current state of our flip-flop is zero, and we're going to uh, where our current state of our flip-flop is zero, then we want our T flip-flop to hold, which means the TA input in this case would have to be a zero. On the other hand, if we're going from one to one, we still want to hold. So our T input would have to be zero still. But if we go from zero to one or from one to zero, we want it to toggle or flip, however you want to think about that, in which case our T input has to be a one. So in the, this case, A is 0, we're going to 0, so we want to hold. Here we're 0, we're going to 0, so we want to hold. Here we're 0, we're going to 1, so we want to toggle. Here, we're at 0, we want to go to 0, so we're hold. Here we're at 0, we're going to go to 1, so we want to toggle. Here we're at 1, and we want to go to 0, so we also have to toggle, even though we're going to 0, because we're changing from 1 to 0. So our flip, our T inputs here would be 0, 0, 1 for A, B, C, T, A, T, B, and T, C. And here they would be 0, 1, 1. And we'd keep going down through where here we have 0, 1, 0, and we're going to 0, 1, 1. So the only one that changes in this case was the C. And if we keep on going and we get all the way to the end where we go back to 0, you'll notice that in every case we want to toggle the C. It changes every single time. Every other time we toggle the B, and every fourth time we toggle the A. And that's just how it works. That's how a, a, a counter that counts in a, in a strict sequence, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, in order, that's how it works. Okay, so now we'll go back. So now we have our, now we have our additional columns in our transition table. So now we can do the K maps from these additional columns. All right, back here. Here's our, here's our additional columns right here. So now our K maps are going to be done off of these additional columns, not off of these. And here they are. Notice the TC. We don't even have to think about that. It's always 1. So that's just the constant 1. TC equals 1. Here we have uh, TB. The TB input equals these four ones right here, C. And the TA input is BC. Now notice, how do we get from one to the other? So, so notice, we're just going to take these columns. This is the A column, and that's going to make up the K map for the TA input. So it's 0, 0, 0, 1, okay? 0, 0, 0, 1, flipping the bottom two rows. And then 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, one. So the two ones are right there. I left off the zeros because it just clutters up the map. But everywhere the square is blank, there's a zero. And then, and so we circle these, and that gives us B ended with C for our TA input. For TC, I'm sorry, for TB, it's just the, the output of the C flip-flop, C. So let's see, what would that be then? So we're going to go back here. 0, 1, 0, 1 and then 0, 1, 0, 1 again. All right, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So we circle all four of these together in one, one group, and that is just C. So our TB input is C, and our TA input is BC. And now we can draw, we can actually draw the uh, schematic. And here's what it would look like. Our TA input is B ended with C. So we take the B output here, and uh, I showed this up at the top, and we bring it around here. 
we take the C output, we bring it around here, and that's B and C into this AND gate, generating the TA input here. The uh, TB input is just C. So C comes here, goes around, and comes right into the TB input. And finally, the TC input is just a 1 all the time. So we hook it up to 5 volts or VDD, whatever, we're, whatever voltage we're running our device at. And then here's our clock. And our clock is driving the clock for all the flip-flops. Now in this case, I've showed the, the clock coming in on the side and the TAs on the bottom and the, and the, and the Q, QA, QB, QC coming out on the top. Usually the, usually the QAs come out on the side. Usually the clock's on the bottom. Usually the TAs on the left. But it doesn't really matter. It's all the same regardless. Okay, so uh, so that's good. Uh, so what we're going to do here then, uh, this is our circuit. And if we power this up and have these flip-flops, and every time we the clock ticked, this is going to count uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, back to 0. Now, the one thing I can't guarantee you is that when you power this up, that it's going to start in the state of zero. That's a little bit of a different issue. For that, we have to build in some initialization circuitry, which is some of that, for, in some cases, that's a whole other course. Um, but uh, we could do it with, uh, with some clears. If we had three clears, we could have a little circuit that would hold them, say, make them, make them active low, so with bubbles, and then we would hold them low, for maybe the first two seconds after we powered it up, and then we would let them go high. Maybe we'd do that by charging up capacitors or something, or we'd have a little timeout circuit. Um, again, that's kind of a different topic, but still, uh, that's what we'd have to do. Otherwise, when we power this up, it's going to come up in one of the random sequences. It'll be either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7. So we just let it come up, and then with each clock tick, we know it's going to start going through the proper sequence. Okay, so that's the circuit. Okay. Okay, if we go back to uh, this screen uh, and, we, and we take the, just the, the next eight columns, the A plus, B plus, C plus columns, we can just do the D, we can implement this with D flip-flops. And just to show you that the, that the circuitry is a little more complicated with Ds because this is a sequential counter, uh, you'll see that, um, yeah, you'll, you'll see that it is a little more complicated. But most of the time, Ts will be more complicated than Ds for your typical circuit. All right, so let's do the K-map. So we're going to extract 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 into our uh, K-map. Uh, sorry, that's the Ts. So we're going to do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. That's our A map. We're going to do the same for B. We're going to do the same for C. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll uh, solve this. Let's see. Uh, yeah, we have to put in all these circles. Yeah, okay. So here they are. So we get DA equals A prime BC by itself. The wraparound, uh, AB, uh, AC prime, and then this group up here, AB prime. And then this is B prime C, and this is uh, B C prime, and then this is just C prime. And that gives us this circuit here, where we have A prime BC, AB prime, and AC prime going into the, this, this OR gate into the DA input. B, C, B prime C and B C prime into this OR gate for the DB and just C prime into here. Now, of course, we get the C prime just straight from here and bring it back, and we get all these other letters, uh, A, uh, A prime, A, B prime, and B, just from our flip-flop outputs. We don't need any inverters here because we have both the A and the A prime, the, C, the B and the B prime, and the C and the C prime already available in our flip-flop. Okay, very good. All right, so this looks pretty good. Um, so that's, that's just doing this uh, counter straight out. Okay, so just to review what we've done so far, we, we developed a counter that counted in a straight sequence, one, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And, uh, and we, we made a state machine to do this, 
it doesn't really have any direct inputs and it doesn't have any direct outputs. It just has the state of the flip-flops for its pseudo outputs, if you want to call them that. And we could have hooked up LEDs to them just so we can see what's going on. But they're not really outputs because normally an output comes through an output network that we have to design. Whereas here we're just showing you the, the, what the state of the flip-flop is. All right. <clears throat> so, so if we go back to our, to our uh, design flow here, uh, in the book, uh, we have our state graph that leads to a state table. We, we do our flip-flop state assignment. In this case, uh, we have three flip-flops and we just assign the states in their straight binary order because we just did 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's how we assign them. When we substitute in the, the flip-flops ABC for the states S0, S1, S2, S3, and so forth, that gives us the transition table. And then uh, from there, if, if we have to, if we're doing something other than D flips, D flip flops, we have to add additional columns. In this case, we, we did T flip flops first, so we added additional columns for our T inputs, and then we extracted that information to the K maps and realized our circuit. And then then you can simulate it, test it, do whatever, or you can build it and and you know make money off of it or whatever, or sell it, whatever you're going to do. We then went back and redid the design with D flip flops. Now, if you remember, we had uh, we had a lot simpler design uh, with our T flip flops in this case, but normally that's not the case. And you'll see this. Okay, so what are we going to do next? The next thing we're going to do is is we're going to do. Uh, so this is our this was our sequential three bit counter: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back to zero. And here was our state table, and here was our uh, here was our um, uh, transition table. Here were the flip flops, and here were our equations that we realized with D's. In this case, we did it with D flip flops, and there's what the circuit looked like. Okay, now uh, if we if we're going to do a non sequential count, let's say we want to do something a little different. Let's say we want S zero to be two. 0, 1, 0. We want S1 to be 7, S2 to be 6, S3 to be 5, and S4 to be 3. Well, how's that going to look? Well, okay, so so how are we going to do this? Now, um, what I would say is that you, if I gave you a box of parts, you would probably be able to build me that sequential counter that goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It might take you some fiddling around, but you, I think eventually you'd figure out kind of how to do it. Well, what about this one? My, I, I would bet you're going to pull your hair out before you're going to get this one designed without learning the basic design approach using logic design. And that's why we have this course. So you can do these designs that are very difficult without these tools. All right, so how are we going to approach this? Well, it's going to be very similar to what we just did we're just going to have to pay a little more attention to the fact that we have some missing states that we're not going to use. We, we only specified five states, 2, 7, 6, 5, and 3. We left out 0. We left out 1. We left out 2, actually, I guess. Uh, so, no, we, we have 2. We left out... Uh, uh, what did we leave out? 3. We left... No? Okay. We have, uh, we don't have zero, we don't have one, we have two, we have three, we don't have four. We left out zero, one, and four. That's what we left out. Okay. And you can see it here. I, I should have brought this up. We have two, seven, six, five, and three. We're missing zero, one, and four. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make a state table. We're going to have state S0. S1, S2, S3, S4. Since, we, since we're going to have three flip-flops, they can code for eight different things. So we're, we're going to have three states that we're not going to use. They're going to be don't cares, and they'll help us simplify our equations. So we have S0, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6, and S7. But notice 5, 6, and 7 are don't cares. Now notice state S0, we're going to go to S1. State S1, we're going to S2. S2, we're going to S3, S3 to 4, and 4 to back to 0. And then we have these three don't cares. But notice, 
our coding for state S0 is 0, 1, 0. Our coding for state S1 is 1, 1, 1. Our coding for state S2 is 1, 1, 0. Our coding for state S3 is 1, 0, 1. So that means flip-flop A is 1, B is 0, C is 1 for this S3. For S4, it's 0, 1, 1. And finally, uh, for S5, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, no, there's no S5. Okay, so, uh, well, it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0, 0. We do have codings for them. The three we didn't use, 0, 1, and 4. Okay, now we're going to substitute these in. And when we substitute them in, we're going to see that, uh, that our states are not in binary order. They're all mixed up. When we substitute in 0, 1, 0 for state S0, it's all messed up. So it, they're not in binary order. We have 2, 7, 6, 5, 3, 0, and then uh, uh, well, 3, and then 0, 1, and 4. So now we have to rearrange all these rows, and we preserve all the information in these rows when we rearrange them. And when we do that, we're going to have a table that looks like this. 0, it's a don't care row. 1, it's a don't care row. 2, we're going to go to 7. 3, we're going to 2. 4, we're going to, it's a don't care. 5 to 3. And 3 to 5, no, uh, sorry, 6 to 5. And 7 to 6. So that's how the count is actually supposed to go. And then... Uh, from this, we're going to use D flip flops. We're just going to we're just going to copy the information straight off of our of our next state uh, rows. So this first row will be the A flip flop, and it'll be don't care, don't care, one zero, don't care, don't care, one zero, and then it'll be don't care zero one one, don't care zero one one, and same for the next one, middle middle column here, don't care, don't care, one one. Don't care. Uh, don't care. Don't care. One one. Don't care. Don't care. One one. And then don't care. One zero one. Don't care. One zero one. You have to remember to flip the rows in every case. And finally, don't care. Don't care. One zero. Don't care. One one zero. Don't care. Don't care. One zero. Don't care. Don't care. One zero. So that works out to be this group and these wrap this wraparound group. These two groups here and the wraparound group and this group of two. And that gives us these equations and this circuit. Okay? And you notice uh, we have AB going into the OR gate plus C prime. Here we have A prime and C going into the OR gate. Here we have B prime and C prime. Notice these simple these these get a little simpler because we can group them in groups of four thanks to the don't cares. The don't cares help us simplify these things, and that's always that's a, always a good thing when we have a lot of don't cares. Okay, um, yeah. Now uh, here's the circuit. All right. Now um, there's some knowledge checks in here you can do, and that's good. Um, now, one of the things that you have to take in mind, though, is what happens if you just power this circuit up? Is it going to power up in a state that you, uh, are, uh, that you can guarantee? And the answer is no. It's going to power up in a random state. What happens if it powers up in one of our states that's not part of our account sequence? It's possible uh, that it could get stuck going from one of our non, you know, our, our, our sequences we left out to one of the other sequences we left out and then back to the same one or something and get stuck in a little loop. In which case you'd have to turn it off and power it up again and hope that it powers up in one of these desired sequences, the green ones. And, and so you have, so one of the things you have to do is you have to look at this because you have to tell your customer what happens when you power it up. Is it going to guarantee the power up in the right state, or if it powers up in a wrong state, is it going to be is it going to be guaranteed to be in the right state after after a couple of clock cycles, or how long will it take, or will it ever get into the right state? And you're going to have to turn it off and turn it back on. Well, your your customer certainly deserves to know this, and uh, again, you can always add some circuitry to this to to uh, to give you a uh, a known power up state. But uh, the problem is that does take additional circuitry, additional cost, and uh, and it actually takes additional skill because <laughs> it's it's a 
it's a topic that's almost beyond the scope of this course. But, but you should certainly look at it. So how can you look at this and know um, what, whether you're going to have a problem or not? Well, what could you do? Well, first of all, you could put it in a simulator and simulate. And you could power it up a whole bunch of times. Uh, or you could force it into, a, into all eight different power-up states, right? Because there's three flip-flops, so there's eight possible power-up states. So put it in, have it power up in one of the red states, and uh, see what happens. Run the simulator one clock cycle and see what it does. And it turns out if you do this, uh, you find out, uh, let's see, do we do that? Yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, let's see. Well, there's a couple of ways you can do this. So what you actually do is you, you go ahead and you, um, you look at the circuit and you assign a, one of the non-desired values here. And then you, you, let, you take these outputs. So let's see. One of the non-desired is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So now we know this is going to be, uh, we're going to have A, a prime. Uh, this is going to be A prime. This is going to be B prime. This is going to be C prime. So, uh, so here we know A is 0, B is 0, so that's a 0. But C prime will be a 1, so our DA is a 1. So we know that on the next clock cycle, this flip-flop's going to change to a 1. What about this flip-flop? Well, we know A prime is a 1, so we know on this clock cycle, the D is going to go to a 1. And then we know both B prime and C prime are 1s. So we know on the next clock cycle, all three flip-flops are going to a 1. So the good news is, based on, based on our uh, thing here, 1, 1, 1 is one of our desired sequences, so we're going to be good. So we know from, we know from uh, 0, 0, 0, we're going to go to 1, 1, 1. What happens if we, go, if we start in 0, 0, 1? Well, you can see I did the analysis, and we're going to go to 3, 0, 1, 1, which is also one of our desired sequences, so we're okay. What if we go, come up in 4? It turns out we go to 5, also one of our desired sequences, so everything's okay. So we can tell, here's what we have to tell our customer, that there's a 3 out of 8 chance when we first power it up that the first state will be one of our states we didn't particularly want, but that after one clock cycle, we can guarantee we'll be in one of the desired states, and from then on out, it will count in exactly the right sequence. Now, if that's not okay, we have to do some uh, some more work. Uh, the customer may may say, "Well, no, I, no, I don't want that. I want it to power up in in a in my initial se sequence." Which, you know, what was his initial sequence? His initial sequence in a state graph was two. So he may say, "I want you to power it up in state two. And you go, "Okay, fine. It's going to cost you a little more money." Well, how much? Well, I'll give you an estimate. He may change his mind and go back to the slightly cheaper circuit. But in any event, this is a discussion you have to have. Okay, so I'm kind of trying to point out some of the engineering considerations that occur uh, along with it. Oh, I didn't show that to you, sorry. Here's your initial sequence. So initially it started in 2. And uh, so he might say, yeah, I want it to power up in S0, 2. Okay, well, we'll build some initialization circuit for you and make that happen. Okay. So, um, okay, what if we have, um, if, if, we, if we wanted to build this thing with T, flip-flops? Well, we do the same thing we did before. We, we, have our, we get, take our state table, and now we add in the columns for the T. The TA input, the TB, and the TC right here. And, um, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so uh, we have, of course, don't cares for some of these. We plot these K maps. We we get our solutions, and uh, we build our circuit. And here are the here are the K maps. And you can see we have two uh, group of four and a group of two, a group of four and a group of two, and a group of four. And this gives us uh, A prime C into plus B prime, A C prime plus B prime, and just B prime. I mean, sorry, just B. So that's the, uh, those are the three inputs for the A, the TA, the TB, and the TC. And then we do the same analysis here. 
Then we find out that from 0, 0, we go to 6. So that's good. 6 is whenever desired. From 1, we go to 7. That's fine. It's whenever desired. And from 4, we go to 2, which is okay. So we're good here, too. So we tell them the same thing. Um, and we, we have to do this analysis every time because we want to make sure we're going to power up in a desired sequence for these counters anyway. What if we do it with an RS? Well, okay, so here now we have, we have to augment our, our, uh, our uh, transition table with a column for the R and the S for each of our three flip-flops. Remember, if we go from zero to zero, R can be a don't care and S has to be zero. If we're going from one to zero, R has to be a one and S must be a zero because it can't be a don't care because it can't also be one. If we're going from zero to one, R has to be a zero and S has to be one. And again, R can't be a don't care because it, 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 we can't have one R and S be one at the same time. And finally, if we want to stay at one, then R has to be a zero and the S can be a don't care. So we have two don't cares here, whereas with, whereas with the JK, you'll see we'll have more don't cares. All right, here's our map with the RSs. And um, again, we have to specify that R and S can never be one. Uh, can't be one at the same time. We, it, notice now we have two columns for every flip-flop. So we have six extra columns and we have six K maps. So a lot more wiring, but look, they're pretty simple. Uh, the circuits aren't too bad. And here's our circuit. Two inputs. In the case of A, B prime, C prime. In the case of B, C and A, C prime. In the case of, uh, case of B. In the case of C, B, C and C prime. And now we do the same analysis. And in this case, uh, we, uh, we have a problem. From zero, we go to one. So that's a little bit of a problem. And from four, we go to one. But the good news is from one, we go to two. And that's one of our desired sequences, so we're okay. But now we have to tell our customer, you're gonna have to wait two clock cycles before, you can, before we can guarantee that it's gonna be in one of your desired sequences. And then it should count correctly the rest of the time. What if we're gonna do JKs? Notice here, for zero to zero, J has to be a zero, but K can be a don't care. From one to zero, J has to be a zero, but K can be a one. I'm sorry, J has to be a don't care, and K has to be a one. For zero to one, J has to be a one, and K is a don't care. And from one to one, J is a don't care, and K is a, a z has to be a zero. All right, so now we have, again, six columns, because we have a J, A, and a K, A, a J, B, and a K, B, and a J, C, and a K, C. Two inputs for every flip-flop. We have six K maps. And, and notice we have these. These are even simpler than our RS because we have more don't cares. C prime and B prime in here. A C prime in here and J. I'm sorry. And uh, J pulled up to uh, constant one. Here J is a constant one and K is a B. And that's all there is to it. We don't even have, we just have constants into here. Uh, again, we have to do our analysis. And it turns out in this case, Zero goes to seven, so that's okay. One goes to three, so that's okay. And four goes to three, so that's okay. So everything's good. And here's our final, uh, so, so that's all good. Okay, now, uh, so uh, the rest of the book pretty much, okay, so the rest of this chapter uh, in the book uh, just uh, goes through the design with a uh, uh, using four flip flops and uh, a four 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 binary bits in our count, and uh, so our count is a little longer and uh, a little more involved. And you can see we'll, we'll do one uh, that has uh, looks a, bit, a little bit like this. Um, we'll go. We'll, we'll we'll do one that goes S zero S one S two S three S four S five S six. So we have one two three four five six seven states, and we do um, here we do four F six A uh, D one and seven. Notice what if we did something like this? If we had um, S one is seven is a F rather. 
And look, F, S4 is, is also a, uh, an F. This would cause a little problem if we tried to do this design exactly the same way we just did. But we can still do it. But now we actually have to, uh, we have to treat these as, as specific outputs because uh, we, can't, we can't encode S1 as 1111 and also encode S4 as 1111. That's going to get us into trouble. Uh, so we're going to talk about how you handle this a little bit later on. We'll come back to this. All right, that pretty much does it. Uh, hopefully uh, this will make a lot of sense. And, uh, and um, go ahead and just uh, you can finish the rest of the chapter. And we'll, um, we'll pick up uh, with a more complicated design when we look at uh, uh, state machines or sequential designs that have some number of inputs and... Uh, one or more inputs, maybe, and one or more outputs. But th for this chapter, we just considered designs with no real inputs, no real outputs, just the state of our flip-flops. All right.